So my name is Paul Williamson. I'm the director of our V2 Smart Products at CSR, and um, I was trying to explain a little about what's happening with innovation in V2 Smart. So we have a number of um, these uh, operating systems that have now adopted the technology in a way that allows developers to create apps that will connect to these external V2 Smart devices. Uh, and so that's iOS, Mac OS, uh, uh, Windows 8, and uh, coming into Android as well with things like the Galaxy S3. And what that developer can now do is create a product for which there's no pressing on. They can go out and build an accessory. And this is a great example. This company called Plus Plug. They're a startup from Italy. What they've done is created a family of these small devices. There's a weather station here. And this device is a ruler, much like a, an estate agent might ha have as a professional device, but they've brought it down to the consumer level. So if I come in here and launch the, uh, the ruler app, um, it connects to the device uh, in the background seamlessly. The user doesn't really have to care about that. You can see no pairing. No care. No pairing. Uh, it's all handled in the app, um, and then you can see the gyros as I tilt the device, um, giving you the position of the, um, the device. Hold it up, maybe. Yeah. Get a bit of glare on it. Okay. Let's see if we can see it through here. Yeah, hold on. Um, oh, there you go. That's it. That's it. So as I move the device, you can see the the gyro is adjusting to show the level of the device. Once I level it uh, and push the button, it's actually projecting now an infrared signal. And if I uh, push again, it will take a, a measurement reading of how far away the the surface I've just pointed at is, um, and you can see that you get the, the measurement readings, you can then put those into a project, uh, or create a history of your readings, and you could use that to then transfer into a CAD application like Google SketchUp, and just basically sketch out your new kitchen design, the room you're building. So you just uh, point that at a wall then, basically? Yeah, you just point it at the wall, and it'll give you a, a, a distance measurement to the point that wow. you pointed it at. Yeah, cool. um, and then the other device we've got here is a little weather station, which if you launch the app again, automatically connects, uh, and it's connected to that and told me that okay, and I'm, I'm see if we can get oh, there, yeah, there you go. Um, but it, it's it. you can see the um, the temperature reading the humidity reading and the, the barometric pressure uh, and that it believes it's going to be raining outside today and you can go in and see the sort of history of readings that little device has been sat there taking over the day um, to see the, the trend in the, the barometer. So and there's no pairing again, it's just hold it up next it was door, just it's almost like NFC isn't it? Kind of, yeah, once you've, you connect them once out of the box and the little app read, leads you through that and then once they're connected all that you have to do is launch the app and it pulls up the, the um, connection to the device. So these things run off a little battery. Um, because it's Bluetooth smart, it's a completely different battery model to um, Bluetooth classic. So these things might last years on, uh, on their batteries. They're not, they're not consuming anywhere near as much power as Bluetooth audio connections, for example. Right, so we're likely to see uh, uh, lots of these little... Sort of applet, hey, yeah, applet, widget, hardware widgets. Hardware they're calling widgets. them accessories because they're kind of like accessories combined with accessories. I love it, and, and, and they'll last for like a year's yeah, worth of battery. Absolutely, well, and we have other companies here like uh, Hippie who are showing off their uh, proximity tag, which is currently in the Apple Store, and the Apple Store are now creating a section for these kind of accessories in store, so that you build a lot more value for the consumer around the smartphone than just the app itself. It's actually their physical environment or the products they carry with them. So it's kind of a bit instead of internet of things it's kind of internet of my things it's kind of the little things around us that we interact with on a daily basis so it's a nice trend that's sort of been enabled by the new Bluetooth smart technology that underlies this um, yeah, interesting I mean I was being a bit cynical because uh, having learned that, that, that uh, you'd need the new uh, Bluetooth smart chipset in your laptop and you couldn't yeah. use it I was thinking well it's a good excuse to, have to force everybody to upgrade their laptops and stuff it is but I mean for me it's a big change it, it does mean that we, you need the newer devices you need the iPhone 5 you need the iPhone 4S or the iPad the iPad mini or one of the later Macs. Are we likely um, to see um, dong um, uh, Bluetooth smart dongles so you yeah. could upgrade your, your old Absolutely. Machine? So if you've got an old Windows PC, I mean, the, the MagCats devices that were shown to you come with a, a dongle built in that you can but plug a into standard, a legacy a, device. Yeah, but are we likely to see any, any dongles that you could add, plug into a, a legacy device which would upgrade it to Bluetooth smart? I think, I mean, you, you can buy those today already. You for can. The, for the PC form factor. Yeah. The reality for the tablet and for the Ultrabook and products like that is they're port limited. I mean, <laughs> the big cell point of Bluetooth Smart is you get this kind of low power connectivity and these, this app connectivity uh, without dongles and widgets. So I think really for these, these new app accessories it will be built around new mobile platforms and smartphones and phablets and tablets uh, and it will be built in. Uh, and the, the growth is pretty quick. I mean there are, um, there are well over a thousand different individual devices out there today that are already supporting Bluetooth Smart Ready which is, is the logo that you look for to know that you can talk and where's to the logo? Show me logo. Um, a logo. Bluetooth Smart is there. Smart Ready looks the same. It just says uh, uh, Bluetooth Smart Ready. Here we go. Here's a Galaxy S3 
uh, phone um, and on the box at the back here you can see it says Bluetooth Smart Ready um, if you can focus on that so it gives you an indication that this device will then connect to Bluetooth, these Bluetooth smart products. Right, right. So okay. it's kind of like the HD Ready, HD yes. products. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The kind of messaging they're going out. And how many, how many products do you think are coming online every... I mean, is it a I fast mean, uptake? It is at the moment a very fast uptake. The, initially it was quite slow. It was, it was led by some key innovations. Nike took CSR's technology and used it in their running shoe uh, at about June last year. And that was the first major product launch, along with Apple. Big fanfare. Now all of the Nike products use Bluetooth smart connection activity to iPhone applications and from that the technology is now accessible to pretty much everyone and it's going into the operating systems very quickly so you see it in Apple in, in, in Windows and coming in Android. Linux? So, uh, Linux already yeah if you have really? Bluezy in your Linux build it will have uh, really? it will have Bluetooth Smart ready. Cool. So it, it's coming very quickly and, yeah. and you are seeing these small innovators coming out with completely new products so yes. pretty rapid kit lick you know I like pretty that. rapid yeah. turn. Yeah yeah okay thanks very much. No, no, no. That's great. Yeah.